you guys, Tom Boy 601 and today we have what I'm going to call a preview of Atlantico. We're not going to go do the full rigmarole of a review like we usually do on this channel, mainly because Atlantico at this moment doesn't feel complete. If you're unaware, Atlantico is the first pan American ship to come to the game specifically. I believe she was a Brazilian ship and as a result, uh, she comes with what would be the George Dewey, the base commander, when you purchase her. You don't have, it's not like the good old days when you got Swirsky, when you got Bliskovica, where you had a tailored commander for the ship. Instead, we kind of have a generalist commander. And at this time, this generalist commander, while he does have some skills that can sort of help out with Atlantico, there are some very large missing holes within his skills that really make Atlantico feel incomplete at this moment. So instead, I have a match that's going to show you the two tales of Atlantico, the one that you dream of, and then the second half where you're like, oh, this is probably going to be more of the reality of what you get. Because if you're unaware, Atlantico is a secondary focused battleship. If you, if you see along the left and right hand side of this ship, there are massive guns on either side, 234 millimeter secondaries that have a 27% chance to set fire. Um, they fire about every 10 seconds. Yeah, like you could be doing some serious uh, damage and about a 10 kilometer range with said secondaries. So you want to brawl this ship. So uh, without further ado, I present you the best case scenario ever for Atlantico. Two torpedoless cruisers and the battleship Hood, who, you know, historically had torpedo tubes, but doesn't have them modeled in this game. Anyways, uh, so we're gonna come around here and we're gonna show what you what you wish you could do every single time with Atlantico, which is just decimate these folks with your secondaries. Now, uh, the guns, I think they're. 387s, which means Baltimore, if it had angled here, would be able to ricochet all of our shells. We would not be able to overmatch it. Um, and because Atlantico doesn't exactly have the greatest accuracy, um, would probably be able to survive a lot longer and could potentially actually do some severe damage to us. But Baltimore kind of turns out here and we are going to continue our march forward towards it. At this point, we're like, oh, this is this is an easy uh, this is an easy layup. Let's just go ahead and we're gonna fire off one shell at a time until we take out this Baltimore. One salvo, two salvos. That's two overpens there. Does it take a third? Okay, we missed completely. I think with that third salvo. How about a fourth gun? Fourth gun. Fourth gun finally finishes off. There we go. Woo. That's kind of the other problem with Atlantico. Um, one of the nice things with Atlantico, surprisingly fast. We have uh, the. Uh, engine boost and uh, as you can see Indy here going for the one torpedo ram he has and well we are able just to straight out juke him at this moment we're like okay we don't need to worry about him anymore we got the secondaries we can just let them finish off Indianapolis right R right okay cool our, our friendly finished him off thank god Okay, cool. Now we can go ahead and approach Hood. And this is this is the dream scenario for Atlantico. We're brawling. We're having fun. This is great. Um, but we're about to see it all sort of slow down. So uh, as we approach this Hood, we can see he's uh, kind of gone in full reverse as we've taken out his two te teammates. We've set the fires on him. We're, we're kind of turning the ship just a little to try to get those secondaries going. Um, you can see we're kind of about to overangle and he is probably gonna slap us at some point. Um, and we're gonna fire those shells right on into him. We're getting some decent pens up in that superstructure. We're trying to make sure that those big secondaries are able to hit Hood. Uh, we want to get those fires going, right? That's going to be our main defense as Hood slaps us right there because we're just a little too under angled in order to deflect any rounds from Hood. Um, and at this point, I'm like, okay, we're continuing our charge, but we're going to have to slow down because we're about to run past the island cover here. And as we can see, um, there's not exactly any other ships nearby. We're not going to be able to really begin to engage anyone else. And that is the ultimate letdown of Atlantico. Um, 
right now Atlantico doesn't really have the best accuracy in the game. Um, right now Atlantico uh, doesn't exactly have the biggest range. It does have pretty decent concealment, which lets you get in pretty close. But all in all, um, you kind of need your enemies to push into you. You need to be positioned in very specific ways in order to use Atlantico to its fullest. And most of the time, you're not going to get that. You're, you're not going to have the three people who rushed in. You're going to have uh, these guys right here who are just going to sit in the back line. And cool, we can go ahead and lob shells at Richelieu all day. And uh, you're going to see we're going to be hitting one shell per salvo, a couple of shells per salvo. And it's not like we're firing quickly. We don't have Brawler to help out with our reload. Um, we don't have Porcupine to extend our secondary range. We I'll go ahead and throw up uh, the commander that we are running. His name's Pedro Lima Santos. Because uh, for the next couple of minutes in this match, this is our life. We're going to hide behind this rock and throw shells. Because we can't survive going out into open water and trying to duke it out with two Richelieu's and a Harbin. So we need to play conservatively behind this rock. We need to bide our time, um, wait for the opportunities to come to us. And, you know, unfortunately, we don't really have the best commander in order to do that. Um, it, yeah, it just, it gets, it gets boring. Um, and it feels just a little disappointing, especially when you're like, hey, here's the first Pan-American ship, which you know, like, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret here. The reason there's so many American ships in the game is because Americans like buying American ships. Uh, and there's a beautiful salvo. One of a couple of beautiful salvos in this game is to pick up the high cow. Uh, Americans love buying American ships. Um, and generally, uh, things like this are, are times where people from different markets will buy a premium that they usually wouldn't, right? Um, you know, America has served well. The the South American corridor, or even Brazil, not really uh, recognized very often in the game. To have this, I've seen a lot of people down in my comments be like, I'm so excited. Brazil finally has a ship in the game. Like, And for Wargaming to come out and be like, hey, here it is. It's kind of half done. Buy it anyway. Kind of leaves a little bit of a dirty taste in my mouth. If I'm being honest, we have been told that uh, the the secondary focused a porcupine, a brawler style commander. We don't know if he'll specifically have brawler or if he's going to be sort of uh, like the pan European battleship commander that we got with Vierbos Unitis. Uh, you know where we have a different style of brawler sh commander, but a brawler style commander overall is in the works. Just wasn't ready. And at which point I say, then why have this ship? We, we can wait. We can wait. We <laughs> Like, let's be clear. There's two other sale events going on in the store this update, right? We have the... We have the... We have the St. Patrick's Day Celtic, which is going to be a Tier 7 reskinned Baltimore that that is actually a British ship. And we have the racing, which is going to have what looks to be like a Plymouth. And you know that both of those are going to be for sale. The Plymouth, maybe it will end up being discounted if you choose not to buy, get the, the ship that you will be able to earn for free for the racing coins. We're not sure how all of that works out, but there's two, I'm going to call them large cash in events. Because usually the St. Paddy's Day uh, stuff also comes with for sale for real money crates that guarantee doubloons. So there's two cash in ships. There are two cash in events, we should call it, already coming to the game this update. Maybe we could have waited on Atlantico. Um, that's just kind of my opinion here as this as this match continues to drag on, because like I said, uh it's not like we will be able to push out there and be very effective. Um and uh yeah. Um, some other quirks and features about uh, Atlantico as we continue in this match, and I kind of finish off my rant there about this ship. 
Uh, the other kind of weird quirk and feature is if you look down at the shell selection, you'll notice that uh, we only have one. And that kind of leads into the other part about this ship being a needing things in order for it to be successful. If you have a team that's going to play smartly, not give up broadsides, uh, well, you're going to find yourself having a hard time because you don't have HE to really punch through. Now, your 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 secondary HE, pretty effective. I won't say call it super effective. Uh, I won't even say the secondaries are particularly effective. Last night, I had a, a Fletcher that was spotted within six kilometers for over a minute, and I did less than 5,000 damage to him, which is a bit annoying when you're kind of counting on these secondaries, and that's supposed to be the the reason you pick up this boat is supposed to be those secondaries. It's a bit, they can be a bit inconsistent. Not that anything else really can't be inconsistent in this game, RNG and such, but uh, just something to be aware of. Um, personally, would I pick up this ship? No. Th no, I, I, I wouldn't plan it. I'd also pick up the Confederate right there bringing us up to 160,000 damage. <laughs> Very nicely done at this point. We're kind of getting to the point where we can kind of push out into the broad and open as our team begins to pincer in on the enemy. We had those two caps, so we've been able to kind of play this very passively uh, since we took A. But um, would, I, would I go out there and pick up Atlantico today? Probably not. No. Wait until, wait until the commander comes out, the free... The free commander comes with it. Then once that comes out, maybe consider it basing on then. But even then, you know, we're into we're into a world um, where I think, or at least in World of Warships Legends, where, uh, you know, inflation has hit. Uh, we've we we used to sell tier sixes. There used to be tier sixes for sale, and you could get those. You know at I'm not going to say a great price for for ones and zeros, but they were, I would put them in the realm of of a treat yourself sort of thing. Um, but now that the consistent tier seven, the the consistent you know premiums that come with a with an update are tier sevens, it gets harder and harder for me to go out there and recommend ever purchasing these tier sevens, unless there's a discount that you can find on them. Um, but you know, money goes different places and different distances for certain people. So maybe, uh, Atlantico is something you'll want to pick up right here, right now. But for me in this little preview, as we've called it, since we're not doing the full review, since we don't have the full capabilities, I'm going to say it's probably one of those boats that you can go ahead and safely wait on your laurels and just wait. Now, I'm sure there'll be people in the comments that tell me, Tommy, you're all wrong. Atlantico is the greatest ship ever to grace God's green earth. And for those people who bought it, I'm so happy for you. But for me, uh, it's incredibly inaccurate. The secondaries can be inconsistent. You don't have a commander that is particularly great. And overall, it leaves me with a particularly bad taste in my mouth so uh we probably won't be seeing this ship much more on this channel until uh, that commander comes out but until then guys uh let me know uh what you think will will atlantico be a part of your fleet or can it stay just in the shop let me know down in the comments below and uh if you like the video like i said like button subscribe button it always helps and uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya.